Ad hominem is one logical fallacy that can occur in a debate structured format or in normal conversations. However, it is important to note that insults are not necessarily this logical fallacy. It becomes a logical fallacy when the personal insult is meant to derail your argument. Your argument is invalid because you are an idiot. This sort of personal insult would not be considered an ad hominem if the person just said, well, you're an idiot, but as far as your argument goes, and then they continue. Although the use of a personal insult during a debate could be seen as childish, it in and of itself is not necessarily a logical fallacy. Additionally, when questioning morals, ad hominems might be necessary during the questioning of morals. A murderer on trial, for example, might be subject to numerous attacks on their character in order to show that, indeed, they exhibit traits that we would ascribe to a murderer. But in a normal debate structure where one is not debating about such things, the ad hominem is a logical fallacy when used to demean the person rather than the arguments. It might be true that, that the person is an idiot, um, stupid, uh, smelly, evil, etc., but that does in no way derail their arguments or their presentation. Rather than attacking the presentation or arguments, you've made the fallacy by attacking the person's character instead. Although it might be interesting of note to know what sort of person you're dealing with, it is irrelevant to the topic at hand. As a Christian, I am very emotionally attached to this issue. Abortion is wrong. And let me explain why. You see, premise Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're a Christian. Of course you're going to think that abortion is wrong. Um, so, I'm sorry. Whatever you're going to say, it doesn't matter. You're a Christian. Now, whatever the presentation was going to be, whatever the arguments were going to be produced, is completely cut down by this ad hominem. Okay, the person's a Christian. In fact, they admitted this in the beginning. They were going to use it as part of their presentation. They might cite Bible verses. They might cite morality, a uh, Judeo-Christian system. Who knows? But whatever they were going to do is completely turned off by the opponent saying, Well, you're this, so I'm not going to listen. Let's have another example. We need to build a giant wall to prevent these illegal immigrants from entering America. It's the only possible solution. Oh, you idiot! You right-wing bigot! Of course you want to do that. You want to spend all the taxpayers' money on it, just like the rest of your white-ring nut jobs. You're probably part of the Tea Party as well. There is no way we're going to listen to you. Again, this person might be Republican. They might be right-wing to the extreme. They might be part of the Tea Party. They might be a bigot. They might be planning to use taxpayers' money to do this. But how does that negate any sort of argument or presentation that this person was going to put forward to do something that they wanted to do for some reason. The arguments, whatever they might have been, are again cut short by the ad hominem. I've been smoking for 20 years, and I have to tell you that cigarettes are extremely addictive, and I feel should be outlawed. You're just a hypocrite. I agree they should be outlawed, but man, you're a hypocrite. Now, in this case, the argument, although brief, is not cut down by the opponent saying that they are a hypocrite. It's true 
that the person is a hypocrite, but it in no way invalidates your argument. In fact, one could say because this person is a smoker that they have a stronger position to take for this particular issue. But this personal insult, which it is, is a valid insult and in no way is an ad hominem because it's not meant to derail the argument. Even if the person didn't agree with the argument at the end and gave that personal insult, it would still not be an ad hominem because it's not being used to derail the argument rather than just point out something that is true. Sarah Palin is a moron. She didn't know what she needed to know in numerous interviews when asked questions, and I can give you examples. Because she is a moron when it comes to politics, we should not vote for her. This is an ad hominem, or is it a personal insult? Is it true? And if it's true, are the conclusions reasonable? We have yet to see the sightings of examples but should the presenter give us examples of when Palin failed to produce certain results and thus showed herself to be rather moronic, we would then have a basis for a legitimate argument. Although the argument is directed at the character, the reason that the argument is directed at the character is to show that her character is inconsistent with the sort of character we would want to vote for in a political office. If Sarah Palin does not know anything about politics, then it would follow that voting for her in a political office would not make sense. We have not seen the full argument or presentation here, but in this case it is a counterexample because although it is a personal insult against Sarah Palin, it is not an ad hominem to show what Sarah Palin has said is fallacious or illogical as far as arguments go. It is an attack against her character, but it might be a warranted one seen as how her character is in question when it comes to politics, and that is what this presenter is trying to make the point of. When was the last time you used this word? Was it the correct usage? If your opponent insulted you during a debate, did they do so to try to derail your argument, or did they do so just to be mean? If it's the latter, then it's irrelevant to the issue at hand. If they're using it to try to attack your entire structure of your debate, then the fallacy is a logical fallacy. If not, then they're simply uh, immature for insulting you, but it says nothing about the argument itself. Think about this word carefully before you use it in a setting of debate. Until next time, take care.